Welcome to Airborne Unlimited for Wednesday at AirVenture 2015 from Whitman Regional Airport. I'm Bree Cross. On today's program, AirVenture's annual celebration of the women in aviation, Rotax introduces a new turbocharged engine, and the F-35 Lightning II makes its first appearance at a civilian air show. Before we get to the other news, there was an accident this morning at Whitman Regional Airport. A Piper PA-46 Malibu went down on approach to runway 27 at about 8 a.m. There were five people on board the aircraft. All appear to have initially survived the accident, but one was transported to a hospital via life flight helicopter. A small fire was quickly extinguished by the Oshkosh Fire Department, which has a presence on the airfield. Now in its eighth consecutive year, Women Venture, a collaboration between the EAA and Women in Aviation, has become a staple at Air Venture. Throughout the day, Women Venture programs offered women in the aviation industry the opportunity to connect with and inspire one another while enjoying one of the world's largest aviation events. Women in Aviation President Peggy Chabrian told ANN's Maxine Shear that the day is packed with events celebrating the women attending the show and all women involved in aviation. We had a record turnout, uh, close to 400 uh, people this morning, and uh, now everyone's kind of heading over towards Boeing Plaza for the, the photo uh, with the matching shirts, the coral shirts this year. And that's, that's a great chance for all the ladies who are here at Oshkosh hoping to, to be in one place at one time and uh, not only get their picture taken, but get a chance to talk and catch up. Uh, and then we have the luncheon today in the um, Theater in the Woods and some great speakers uh, lined up for that. So it's, it's a packed, uh, packed day today. The F-35 Lightning II made an arrival Wednesday afternoon at Women Regional Airport. It is the first time the F-35 is being displayed at a civilian air show at AirVenture. The airplane on display at Oshkosh is the A variant developed for the U.S. Air Force. The airplane is also being built in a short takeoff vertical landing version and a C model that will be flown from carrier decks by the U.S. Navy. The F-35 is the most expensive weapon system ever built by the U.S. government. It is designed to guarantee air superiority for the U.S. military for the foreseeable future. After the break, BRP introduces a new, more powerful Rotax engine. Stay with us. I currently am employed at United Airlines as a captain in a 767-400 and a 757-300. And I'm just about up to 27,000 hours of total time. 50 years of flying. I was at Thermal. I spent uh, all afternoon in my little 1946 J3 trying to get over the hill and I came back quite frustrated. And just then somebody came in with a carbon cub. I ordered the carbon cub approximately 24 hours later and sold my J3. And I was convinced in not more than about 10 to 15 minutes that it was the nicest flying airplane I'd ever flown in my life. It's the tennis shoe of the airplane in that it does everything and everybody wants to wear it all the time because it's comfortable. My intentions when I bought the airplane uh, at 60 years old were to keep it until I physically no longer could fly an airplane. I have no intentions of ever selling this airplane. This is my love of my life airplane and I'm going to keep her until I can't fly anymore. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, coming to you from AirVenture 2015 at Whitman Regional Airport. If you're in Oshkosh and you've seen something that we need to see, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. BRP introduced a more powerful 135 horsepower Rotax aircraft engine Tuesday at AirVenture. 
The Rotax 915 IS is based on the proven concept of the Rotax 912-914 engine series. The Rotax 915 IS engine offers more power, full takeoff power up to at least 15,000 feet and a service ceiling of 23,000 feet. Dean Vogel with Lockwood Aviation said that the engine is targeted at high performance home builders. This is going to be more for the, for the amateur built experimentals uh, that are going to be going higher and faster. People who want to cruise cross country. That's me personally, that's my kind of flying. You know, go long cross country, at, you know, go on an adventure, see new places, meet new people, and things like that. So you want to be able to get up into the teens and cruise efficiently to be able to do that. And yeah, you can come down low when you want to, but that's not primarily where this engine's going to live. Serial production of the Rotax 915 IS engine is scheduled for the second half of 2017. The NextGen Fund kicked off its second round of funding to help pilots and aircraft owners get ready for 2020, when all airplanes will be required to have at least ADSB out capability to fly in controlled airspace. Jim Huey, managing partner of the NextGen GA Fund, told ANN's Jim Campbell that the fund is expanding to include personal use airplanes is for the Jumpstart In program. Uh, this follows up our, our initial Jumpstart announcement earlier this year, uh, which had to do with low-cost ADSB out units. Uh, this program is a financing program for ADSB In, for low-cost ADSB In. Uh, it has to do with uh, ADSB in, in in a bundled form, which is uh, Aspen Avionics displays coupled with L3 Lynx, NGT uh, products, uh, antenna, as well as uh, installation costs, all wrapped together in a low monthly payment. So we're excited about those programs as well. Lancer Evolution airframe kits ordered after July 18th will include a ballistic recovery parachute system by BRS Aerospace as standard equipment. BRS founder Boris Popoff said that this recovery system is specifically designed for aircraft in the weight and performance class of the Evolution. The Evolution is a much heavier and faster aircraft that we've previously worked on. So as aviators know, velocity, this forces are squared up that velocity. So as you increase weight and speed, you enter in a whole new realms of, of engineering challenges. Uh, we didn't necessarily revolutionize the parachute materials or, or components. We combine a bunch of existing components with some new philosophies on how to make a parachute stronger and lighter. So not only is this new parachute better as far as performance characteristics, it's also going to be lighter and less bulky, which is a big deal in aviation circles. The Evolution was always intended to have a parachute system, but until recently the required parachute had not been available. After these messages, part three of our discussion with EAA Chairman Jack Pelton. An interactive links application is available in the Apple and Android app stores. This free app is a virtual simulation of the Lynx NGT9000 touchscreen cockpit display that lets pilots interact with the unit as if they had a real system in their hands. The app covers the entire Lynx family of ADSB products, including features and options to help customers decide which Lynx model is right for their needs. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With Integral Backup Battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. We are the Aero News Network. With over 250,000 stories, 7,000 Aero podcasts, 2,500 Aero TV programs, 500 episodes of Airborne, and so much more, it's a record of performance unequaled in the Aeroverse. And there's far more to come. Aero News, committed to innovate, inform, inspire, and disrupt the aviation world. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, coming to you from Whitman Regional Airport at AirVenture 2015. Before the start of the week, our ANN CEO, Jim Campbell, sat down with EAA Chairman Jack Pelton for an in-depth discussion of the industry and organization. We'll be bringing you a portion of that interview each day from Oshkosh. Today, they discuss making GA more cohesive and working together for a common goal. It's been said, uh, oh, frankly by us in some cases, 
that we're not very good at preaching to our own choir, but we're certainly not very good at preaching outside the choir. How might we recraft uh, the mechanisms that we use to state aviation's case and make sure that aviation doesn't get kicked to the curb? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a complex story, and I think that's the effort we have is to how do you, how do you dissect the story into its various components. There's an economic component in, in the communities that have uh, vibrant aviation airports and activities going on. There's jobs associated with it. There's technology. Uh, there's the ability f and path for our young people to get involved in something interesting from an uh, education and career standpoint. There's the freedom aspect. Uh, just many, many different stories that we've got to collect and figure out how to weave them together so that we actually become more of a front and center story than, than getting left behind. Right now, uh, it tends to be the airlines are driving the, the discussion, and, and that's because they're going through very strong times where uh, they're at capacity, they, they need to put more planes in the sky and more routes to, to keep up with the, the travel, and we just got to make sure that our aspect of aviation isn't left behind and that there's the humanitarian aspect of it, there's uh, medical relief, there's just lots of components to it that we have to make sure get recognized equally with commercial aviation. There is some precedent for some of the old regulatory aspects in which the FAA would interact with aviation to be accomplished by other organizations and other means, ASTM and what happened with LSA and also with some of the avionics standards and all. Does it make sense to investigate the potential for letting GA self-regulate from the standpoint of working through an ASTM or, or an industry standard and take over as much of that as possible while the FAA keeps crying poor on so many issues and said, well, we can't do this, we can't pay for it, so forth and so on, when the industry, one, probably is far better equipped, two, certainly ready for that, and finally could give us the right nudge to start building that cascade effect that builds true revolution uh, and allows industries to not only recover but persevere. I, I think you're, you're spot on there, and I think we're at the... the, the uh deflection point where right now is probably the best time. There's some great work that I'm sure you're aware of on the avionics ASTM standard. That, but your, you know, your earlier comment about disruptive technology, the only way that's going to happen is if we do it through the ASTM standard process or self-regulating. Self mm -hmm. uh, the, the way the regs are written today, it's just you, you just can't get there from here, to you know, coin an old phrase. So um, I'm a big supporter of that. I think if we want to see electric flight, if we want to see a lot of things, uh, it's going to have to be through that route. And it's, you know, it's, it's proven that that's a uh, very technically sound, matter of fact, in some areas, uh, tighter rigor than even, even the, uh, the regs have in it from, from the FAA. So um, it is time to start exploring that and let the FAA, uh, you know, stay hunkered down in their bureaucratic process while we move on with uh, another path to get, get done what needs to be done. And a lot of that is keeping our older airplanes flying, uh, getting the new technologies introduced that, uh, do improve safety, uh, creating those paths for that to happen is, is really vital. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I was writing about certain kinds of disruptions. What does an iPlane or an iHawk or an iCub look like to you? Something that really could turn this industry on its ear. Well, I think uh, taking the technologies that are out there from uh, that are a cause loss of control to be preventable, it's all out there today, especially through the autonomous flight activities integrating that technology into the airplane. So it is available, and I'm not suggesting that we stop flying airplanes and letting uh, computers fly, but have it be available when you do something stupid uh, to help you get out, of, get out of it. I think from an efficiency standpoint, there's a lot that can be done, uh, especially when you looked at, look at electric generator technology so that you aren't having to use the propulsion full time mm -hmm. to help the efficiencies of it. Um, the whole notion around access of, of Speed versus high-speed characteristics versus low-speed characteristics, incorporating some of that some of that technology, um, and then just the overall monitoring that we've grown accustomed to having in the eye. Uh, not to get Apple all all, all on us <laughs> for this, but you know, having all of that technology available that helps the flight planning, the monitoring, the tracking, the continuous feedback loop that makes flying. When you're done, an experience that you, you, can, you can grow from, learn from, because it's giving you real-time data and feedback, and is also connecting you with people who you may be going to see or, or uh, any of the infrastructure issues. So there, there's a lot that can be done there. I think, and the problem is our certification gets in the way. 
Tomorrow, Jack and Jim discuss growing the industry and building a cohesive message around common goals. Well, that's our program for today. We'll be back tomorrow with a look at the day's events from AirVenture 2015. I'm Bree Cross. We'll see you tomorrow. And if you know what kind of an airplane this is behind me, comment below.